Let's teach our kids the simple ways to transform their health, number one. Their economics, number two. Their ability to communicate, number three. Their life and treasure and lifestyle, number four. Spirituality, number five. And the list goes on and on. Let's not leave out any of the least of disciplines that encourage us to do the next one, to do the next one, to do the next one. First thing you know, this whole scenario for you is spinning up instead of out of control on the negative side. This is all you got to do. It's as simple as this. It's as simple as a start. Committing yourself to life change. And once you start down this road, I promise you, you'll join the 10% and the 3%. We're going to talk financial independence in just a little while. Guess how many people can retire from the income of their own personal resources when it comes time to retire? Answer, 5%. In the most independent country in the world, 95% are dependent, 5% are independent. Take charge of your own retirement. I'm telling you, if you take charge of your own retirement through personal development and all these skills we've taught today, plus what's coming up, financial independence, I'm telling you, take charge of your own retirement, you can multiply it at least by five, maybe by 10, maybe by 20, maybe by 100. Let the government take care of it, some company take care of it, you got to divide by five. Take charge of your own life, take charge of your own day, take charge of your own conversation, take charge of your own family, take charge of your own possibilities. And learn these skills, develop this kind of strategy, and I'm telling you, life will open up for you. Join the 3%, join the 10%, join the 5%, walk away from the 95%. In our Leadership Weekend we teach, find out what poor people read and don't read it. Don't talk like they talk. Lend a helping hand, but don't fall into the their poor philosophical scenario. Don't blame what they blame. Don't use the excuses they use. It's called the language of the poor. Switch gears, switch language, switch ideas, switch strategy. Start with the simplest of disciplines. And don't be mean any of these disciplines. The smallest of disciplines starts the process of life change. And if you'll invest in this thing called discipline, you can have whatever you wish. It's called the beginning of a miracle. Now here's the last clue on this. Do the best you can. We covered earlier, but here's a good scenario for the do the best you can. I've got a good question for you. Is the best you can do all you can do? And the answer is no. Strangely enough, if we all fell on the floor right now and did as many push-ups as we possibly could, and let's say for some reason, you haven't been into push-ups lately, I can't imagine why, but let's say... And let's say the best you can do is five. And you look up at the rest of us and say, hey, five is the best I can do. We can tell by the look on your face, that's probably true. Five is the best you can do. Now is five all you can do? The answer is no. If you rest a little, you can do five more. And if you rest a little, you can do five more. And if you rest a little, you can do 15 more. How did we get from 5 to 15? It's a miracle. <laughs> and if you rest a little, you can do 15. Rest a little, you can do 15. Rest a little, you can do 20. How did you get from 5 to 20? It's a miracle. Did you know you can keep doing that? Do a little more, rest a little, do a little more, rest a little, and finally get up to 50 push-ups? Is it possible to get up to 50 push-ups? Of course! How do you go from 5 to 50? It's a miracle! How do you get a miracle going? Number one, do what you can. Don't leave out what you can from writing a letter to your mother in Florida. Start cleaning it all up. Two, doing the push-ups. Go from 5 to 50. It's a miracle. Number one, do what you can. Number two, do the best you can. Here's number three, rest very little. Don't rest too long. Why? The weeds take the garden. Kids have got that figured out. You can't rest too long. Here's the clue. Make rest a necessity, not an objective. The objective of life is not to rest. The objective of life is to act. Think of more disciplines. Think of more ways and means in which to use your own wisdom and your own philosophy and use your own attitude, your own faith, your own courage, your own commitment, your own desires, your own excitement. Invest it, invest it, invest it, invest it in discipline so that it's not wasted. Smallest of discipline. Thereby transform your life. Join the 5%, join the 10%, join the 3%.
Guess when I went and got this little book, Richest Man in Babylon? The same day I heard about it, I went and got it. Somebody says, well, Mr. Owen, does that make you different than most other people? And the answer is yes. Somebody says, well, why is that? We don't know. We don't know. What do you know? You don't know. I don't know. None of us knows. Some do and some don't. The numbers don't change. Only the faces change from those who get in on a seminar like this, listen to a dynamic sermon, read a book, listen to some cassettes, take seriously the next conversation of a friend who wants to level with you and do something about it. And you can walk away from the 97% and not live there anymore. Because if you don't, the next six years of your life will be like the last six. Mr. Shove said to me, Mr. Rohn, six years now you've been working, I'm telling you the next six years of your life is gonna be like the last six, unless you take advantage and start making these personal changes. I made the changes, totally revolutionized my life. So take a look at the next five years of your life. It's going to be like the last five, unless, 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 unless you change. And if you will change, everything will change. Join the 5%. Ten years from now, the numbers are going to be the same. But I'm telling you, some faces in this audience can change and start showing up in the 3% crowd, and the 5% crowd, and the 10% crowd and thereby dynamically affect your life and your future.